Okay, we have a story from one of our viewers. Her name is Jerry, and she was at Angels Camp, California, and had a very strange and paranormal experience. Extremely frightening. Also tonight, we are at an abandoned mine on the east slope of the Sierra. Really creepy. That's next. So this is the Chimung Mine on the east side of the Sierra Nevada. It turns out this mine is haunted. Apparently back in the early turn of the century, 1900s, sometime in that first decade, there were some disgruntled workers who were not being paid and they approached the owner, foreman of the mine and he didn't have their money. They gave him one last chance to pay them. He couldn't do it, so they grabbed him and threw him down the mine shaft where he was never to be found again. And apparently it was on a Saturday night, so every Saturday night is when the ghosts come out, or the ghost comes out in this mine. Lucky for me, it's Thursday, so. <laughs> Okay, so this place is really remote. And coming in this afternoon, turns out the road was washed out. It was all muddy. I had to hike the last mile and a half to get in here. And there was a couple of sheriff's deputies that were on a quad trying to navigate because somebody apparently was stranded past the mine here somewhere. So I parked the car and walked the remaining mile and a half. And uh, so I am the only one here right now. It's really creepy. It's pretty cool too. I don't know if I want to be here after dark, so I'm doing the story right now, but I found shelter in one of the buildings here. It's really windy and it's it's creepy because you can hear things kind of jostling in the wind, metal and things moving around. It's a little strange, but anyways, for tonight's beer, we have Automatic Torpedo Imperial IPA and that is our beer of choice for tonight. And it looks like some kind of subatomic symbol or something there, but pretty cool. I left my drinking cup in the vehicle, so I will be fine drinking straight out of the can. That's tasty. I do like IPAs and I do love, this is a Sierra Nevada product so I do love Sierra Nevada so there we go so this story took place in 2012 from one of our viewers her name is Jerry her grandparents had built a home in 1998 in Angels Camp California the interesting thing about Angels Camp is there's a lot of history there the Miwok Indians had lived on this land for hundreds if not thousands of years. And then in the mid 1800s, the California gold rush, settlers and gold miners came in and all these people essentially displaced these Indians, the Miwok Indians. And so this home is built on this Indian land in this subdivision. And in fact, there's remnants left over from this time period in this subdivision. There's a, an old stone chimney, a wash machine that's really old, mining equipment scattered about, and even an old stone cabin. And one of the strangest things is there's an Indian burial ground smack dab in the middle of the subdivision. It's roped off, it says caution, stay out, but it's easy just to kind of go over and go into it if you want, but most people respect it and just leave it alone. Jerry said the home that they had built as a teenager and then growing up as a teenager, she always felt really uncomfortable there, particularly 
upstairs in this two-story farm style home. The hallway, this really long hallway, always gave her the creeps. She had chills go through her body just walking down this hallway even during the daytime, let alone at night. Her grandparents put up a nightlight to make her feel more comfortable when she'd walk down this long hallway by herself in the middle of the night and she never felt comfortable there. In fact, she said she felt there was something lurking in that hallway and she always felt watched. So at some point in the 2010s, the, both grandparents passed away and Jerry's family still used the home and kept it in the family as like a vacation home. They would go there, visit, hang out and have a place to stay. On a few occasions, they had some really strange things happen. One of them was they would hear footsteps walking upstairs when there was nobody upstairs. Another time they were watching TV and they heard a door slam upstairs. They stopped the movie, the mom went up the stairs and she noticed all the doors were wide open. None of them were closed. Really strange energy in this place. So in 2012, Jerry moved to Reno, Nevada, just north of where I live. And she needed to go to Sacramento for the day. So she went over the pass, down her pass, and decided to stay at her grandparents' place in Angel's Camp. Save her some money, didn't have to go to a motel, and it was close enough to Sacramento where she could do her business the next day and just stay there. Why not? She said the moment she walked into the house, she felt this unease over her whole body. Just unease about being there by herself. The house is really big. It's really echoey. And she wasn't comfortable, but she thought, well, I'm here. I'll just spend the night. Should be fine. Decided to watch a movie. It's getting dark. And she went to the old VCR in the TV. It was old VCR hooked up to the TV and she found a movie in the movie collection. The old, we all had these movie collections. <laughs> now everything's streaming. Pops in a movie, watches a movie. Now it's pitch black outside. The movie's over. Ejects the VHS tape, turns off the TV, turns off the VCR. She said it was really strange that over the next few minutes, periodically, the light on the TV would come on and then off, on and then off. Also, the VCR sounded like it was still ejecting the tape. The mechanism inside was like trying to eject the tape and everything was off. And she thought, this is really strange. But finally it stopped. And she said, okay, everything's fine. It's fine. So it was getting late. She decided I need to go to bed. Just wrap this day up, be done with it. And I got a busy day tomorrow. So goes to the bathroom, does her stuff, walks down this long hallway, gets into bed. She said the moment she closed her eyes, she felt this chill come over her body. Just this absolute chill and she was under the blankets. She was laying there and she said, she told me, she heard this strange mumbling over her head. Just this soft mumbling, like human mumbling, talking. It felt like a disembodied person or head talking. I don't know what that really means, I can guess, <laughs> but it was frightening, extremely frightening. And just then she felt this paralysis come over her. She was paralyzed for like 10 seconds. Just couldn't move, even if she wanted to. And she's laying there, and then as soon as she can, after about 10 seconds or so, she could move again and she rolls over and grabs the phone off her nightstand to call her mom. So Jerry's explaining to her mom on the phone everything that happened that night. The VCR, the TV, 
the weird uneasiness she felt, and then the chill and the being paralyzed feeling. She was explaining that to her. But she noticed in the phone, in the phone call, there was some loud background noise going on. And she said, Mom, are you watching TV? And the mom said, no, I'm laying here in the dark listening to you because I was asleep as well. And she said, I hear what sounds like two women talking in the background. So Jerry thought maybe the phone call was intercepted, somebody patched in or something. There was like this overlap in the phone. And she said, Mom, can you hear that? And the mom said, no, I can only hear you. And then Jerry and her mom had some silence in their conversation. Jerry listened to this conversation and she heard Tammy, she's talking to her mom about going to bed. She needs to go to bed right now. Jerry was startled to hear this. She told her mom, they're talking about us. And the mom said, you need to leave the house now. I will find you a motel room. Get out of there immediately. Jerry kept her mom on the phone while she packed her gear up as quickly as possible. She went to get out of the house, adjusted the lights, dis turned on the alarm system, locked the door, and walked back to her vehicle. She only had the moonlight to guide her back to her vehicle. Mom is still on the phone. She gets to her vehicle to get in. She looks back at the house and she sees a light inside the house flicker for just a moment. Right then, the call with her mom dropped out. Jerry was just in a panic, just so creepy and frightening. She gets in her car, starts it up, and she's driving away, trying to dial her mom in again. She can't get through to her until she gets out of the subdivision. She finally gets through to her mom. Her mom tells her where the motel is, tells her the directions, tells her everything's taken care of and as she's driving the motel room she's just freaked out and she's heading to this motel finally gets there she checks in she gets in this motel room and she said her body was hot she was like heating up she knew she was out of the situation and so it took some time for her body temperature to come back down she was so grateful her mom set her up with this motel room to get her out of there and didn't question her, didn't argue with her, just took care of it. So she really did not sleep at all that night, really felt like a wreck after what she'd been through. She said she'd never been back to that house again. In fact, three years later, she said the family sold the house in 2015 and she was kind of relieved that they did. She said she didn't really believe in ghosts, didn't really understand and follow the paranormal, but this experience really shook her and was a very real experience for her. And that is our story for this evening. <laughs> I am in a really creepy place. The sun is going down pretty quickly. I got about this much left on the horizon before it's going to get dark. And then an hour after that, it'll be pitch black up here. But I'm going to be around here for a little bit longer. So we'll see what kind of footage we get. But we also have an interview with Jerry right now. So there we go. So yeah, quite a story you had there in California. And this was 2012, I believe. Yes. Correct. Yes, 2012. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And then there was um, what did this what did this uh, Indian burial ground look like? It didn't really look like much. It was kind of like a, a field. Um, it didn't really have any headstones or anything like that. But I yeah. guess um, they knew that the land was used for that. So it was kind yeah. of just a flat field in the middle of the subdivision that was roped off and it said um, Indian burial Indian burial ground do not trespass or something like that but it was very easy to hop over that if you wanted to. sure it wasn't like a yeah. gate or anything so yeah wow yeah because because I, I look actually looked up I was like yeah what does an Indian burial ground look like and they they can look like 
a lot of different things. Sometimes there's these big mounds. Sometimes there's like wooden boxes that are above ground. Yeah. And uh, um, and, and different uh, smaller mounds and things like that. So, so right. when when you were um, because I read your story, so, so you don't have to like retell the whole story, but the um. Have you heard of anything else in that area? Like, Not really. I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. No. I'll just 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 listen. The sorry. the area is, is very interesting. It has a rich history. Um, you know, it belonged to the Miwok Indians um, for thousands of years, and then obviously the white men Canadian. And you know, there was a mining boom, um, and so there was a lot of you know mining encampments. But what was really weird is that in the 1960s and 70s, um, there was, like, cults up there. Um, I don't know if, you know, I don't know, but you can look it up. Um, There was a lot of really weird activity with that kind of stuff up there. Um, And then supposedly all of that kind of died down, um, Mm -hmm. you know, in the 80s and 90s. But there was still just, like, weird things going on. I don't want to be too graphic, but one of my grandparents' friends, uh, their son was actually murdered and they found his body like disembodied and chopped up in pieces in one of the creeks up there. Yeah, and it, and I don't know, like supposedly the cults had kind of been snuffed out um, in the 70s or 80s or something, late 70s, early 80s, but there was still just like a lot of weird things that would go on up there. And then along with the, the paranormal history of it, um, that yeah. had been kind of strong up there. So. Wow. Yeah, I know yeah. the... Um... Angel's Camp is, it's like Virginia City. It's just this old town just still sitting there and uh, yeah, occupied. Um, I haven't yeah, been there before, but I'd, I'd like to go check that out. And then I want to go and check out the, um, go back to the um, Big Tree State Park down there, too. That's just a wonderful place. Yeah, it is. I love it up there. My my grandparents actually had a cabin in Arnold before they moved to oh. Angels Camp. Um, yeah, they had their wow. cabin built in like 1984, and then in 1998 they had their their house built in Angels Camp. Um, so I'm familiar with both areas, and I I love it up there. You know, it's a really rich history, like Nevada. So yeah, it really is, isn't it? It's so cool to have all that uh, national forest and. And that land set aside in this wonderful country, and then you add that historical element to it with the um, absolutely, you know, old towns like Angels Camp and and all the other things that we have up here. It's, yeah. it's cool. Even like um, yeah, really. Is. Um, I think Sor- Sorensen's or there's the um, as you're heading up the canyon up heading towards 50 or not 50 towards Carson Pass. There's uh, yeah. Then that used to be a stage stop for the and the Pony Express went through there and all kind of things. So it's, it's, and it's cool. incredible. I mean, even Snowshoe Thompson and you know yeah. and everything. It's a, yeah, it's a great history up there. We're we're really lucky to live where we do. So yeah. So this was a newer house and it was built. What yes. what year was it built? In 1998. 19. Okay, that's really new. Wow. Okay. Yeah. 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 And yet it's um. And then you had you were talking about the uh, the vibe of the house, yes. and it just and did you always feel like that, or was it just that I a couple al- of times? I always did. You know, it's it's okay. really weird because even though the house was new, um, I always had an uneasy feeling there, even when we had lots of family over, even during broad daylight. It, it was always wow. had kind of a, a darkness. Um, on the upstairs part of the house and like the the hallway was really long and, and daunting for some reason it just felt mm. like I was always being being watched like every time wow. I walked down the hallway even if it was in the middle of the day and, and we had family there there was just a really creepy um, vibe I don't know how else to describe it yeah no that's a good description how long was the hallway just like your guess. I don't know. It was it like was how many long. How many doors? Like how many rooms and how many doors? You know. So at the very end of the hallway was a large room that they called the rec room, uh, but it was yeah. a spare bedroom. Um, so, and then after that, uh, there was like two other bedrooms on the right hand side, and then okay. a bathroom. And then you yeah. pass the stairwell, and once you pass the stairwell, was one more bedroom on the end of the hallway on the other side. Yeah. Okay. And was there good lighting in that hallway? 
Not really. Not even during okay. broad daylight. There was a lot okay. of trees on the property, and I think the yeah. trees were kind of shade, shading the um, the hallway and the house and all of that. Mhm, mhm. And so, and then you said um, even at like night, getting up to go to the bathroom um, it was pretty scary walking down they, the hallway. It was, yeah, with, like they put a lot of night lights out for for us because we were the grandkids, yeah. but. You know, yeah. I, and I'm pretty sure that my brothers, you know, felt the same way. It was just this wow. really odd feeling. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. No, that's – yeah, it's hard to um, translate that to everyone else, but it's – I'm sure it's very uh, – it's a strong in, internal feeling that you have. Yeah. I've had, dream, you know, nightmares like that, like going into a basement, and it, they, it's mm. – this is – you know, and even if there's lights on down there, there's like this impending doom or something, and it's just like wake up. Yeah. Like, like, oh my gosh, that was frightening, and that was just a, a yeah. you know nightmare, let alone a, a real place. So, Absolutely. so you were, um, you spent the night there. Mm-hmm. You were traveling through, and uh, let's see, I'm just kind of get your story here. Passed away, so much echoey, and. And then what was the uh, the VCR, what was it doing? You shut it off, the power was off, and it was still making the sounds? Yeah, it was. Do you rem- so a lot of people probably aren't old enough to remember this, but the old school VCR is like whenever you would eject a movie, yeah. it made that noise. And it, yeah, it's a very distinctive sound. Yeah, so um, I took the movie out after I was done watching it, and the VCR kept making that noise like it was ejecting a video. And then even though the TV was off, the power button for the VCR was blinking red. Um, mm-hmm. And the, the video was out of it. Wow. And so, yeah, because there's this the mechanical sound of the thing springing up and kind of ejecting the um, the, 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 the tape, the VHS. And uh, yeah, okay. And so and then you were um, you were lying in bed, and then what? Describe describe that. I was lying in bed and I was getting ready to go to sleep, and I know it's kind of uh, wussy or whatever, but I had all of the lights out. Uh, or I had all of the lights on, I'm sorry, because I was I didn't really feel comfortable being there alone. So I had, like, every yeah. single light in the house on, including the bedroom light. Yeah. And I was like, all right, all right, I'll just leave. <laughs> so I'll just leave with the lights on tonight. And I take no. in the movie out, and I was getting ready um, to go to sleep. And all of a sudden when I was laying in the bed there, um, my body froze. I felt like this cold temperature cold freeze come all over me and my body was frozen and then right above my head I heard mumbling that almost sounded like disembodied voices like people above me talking and I got chills down my whole body and um, I I just I knew that it was something paranormal because I've heard those kind of mumbling voices before um, mm-hmm. you know in other places that were you know supposedly you know haunted or whatever so I've heard that kind of like disembodied mumbling that sounds like a person talking and then when you replay the sound in your mind and you try to slow it down um, you know you can kind of make out words so. It just sounded like there was talking above me. I got chills. My body was frozen. And then I automatically got nervous and I called my mom and um, told her about what happened because I was just frightened. Like it just, everything about that, that night felt uneasy. Like I was being watched in the house, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, there was something there. So. And then you talked to your mom and then while you were talking, you heard, um, Somebody say in the um, let's see. Uh, she's talking to her mom and about to go to bed. She needs to go to sleep right now. Yeah. So it was really weird because um, I was yeah. talking to my mom, and um, you know, I was kind of describing like what had happened to her, and I heard a lot of static in the background of our call, and I heard like what sounded like people were talking in the background. So I said to my yeah. mom, "I'm like, are you?" are you watching TV right now? What's that loud noise in the background? And she's like, no, you know, I'm just sitting here talking to you. And I was like, oh, well, you know, it sounds like there's people talking. Do you hear that? 
she said no. And then I was like, I think our phone call got intercepted. And I could hear these two women talking in the background of our call. And one of them said, Tammy, she's talking to her mom about going to bed and she needs to go to bed right now. Wow. Yeah. And is Tammy, is that a name that relates to anything to you? No, no family name. I have no idea who that is. Sure. Got it. Um, Wow. So, yeah. And, and, but you could hear that through the static on the phone while you were talking to your mom. Can you describe that when you were leaving? There was another series of little things that happened that, yeah, I mean, I packed up everything I could as quickly as I could. My mom was obviously scared, too, and she's like, you need to mm-hmm. leave right now. I'm going to pay for you to get a hotel room or a motel room downtown, so get all your stuff together. Um, and I stayed on the phone with her during that whole time that I was packing and getting mm-hmm. everything ready. And then I armed the house because it had um, an alarm system. And I was on the phone with her, and I was trying to get into my car. I turned out all the lights. And all of a sudden, when I'm trying to get into my car, um, our phone call, it drops when I'm on the line with her. And I mm-hmm. see some lights in the house flicker, and I called her back. And every time I tried to call her back in the interim of me leaving the house to go to the motel room, which wasn't very mm-hmm. far away. It was maybe three miles. But mm-hmm. I, the call kept dropping to her until I got out of the subdivision. And mm. that's not normal. There's cell coverage out there, yeah, um, you know, the there's telephone poles. And that and that's never happened um, before either. Uh, we went back to that subdivision for like a family reunion a couple of years ago. And, you know, it's still the same, but nothing like that has ever happened before or since then. So yeah. it was just yeah. weird because it was like I was obviously scared. I had turned off all the lights in the house, armed the house, was getting ready to leave and walking out the door. And then, you know, during our conversation, the call got dropped, and then I saw the lights in the house flicker, and it was just like, it was surreal, because this yeah. is the kind of stuff you hear about in, like, horror movies, and I always, exactly. I never really believed in, in ghosts, and I think it's kind of hokey when I watch movies like that, because I'm like, that's so unrealistic, but this is actually, like, happened. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. When you say the lights flickered, where in the house were they flicker? Where did you see the actual flicker? Well, actually, the upstairs... So, okay. Yeah. And what was that? A yellow light, white light? What what color, what color light or what? It was dark. It, obviously, the the lights were off, so it was dark. But then you saw like like a like like a flash or a flicker. Kind of like, like a flash. Yeah, it was like a yellow light. Almost like maybe not that this is what it was, but somebody uh, took the light switch and flicked it up and down a couple times or something. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. That kind of thing. Wow. Oh, and so you were moving away, but you were at the car when when the flicker happened. So did you look back at the house with the phone? On so your... my and I was parked in the driveway facing the house, and so I was I could see like the upstairs pretty clearly when that happened. Okay. So. All right, you guys. Thanks for coming along tonight. If you guys like stories about the strange, unexplained, and things that go bump in the night, like and subscribe. You guys know how to do that. And I appreciate all the comments, and I appreciate you guys. All right, as always, keep hiking.